The Vibe with the Three on Five presents the 2023 Awards Ceremony. Thank you, editing cam and guys. Hello and welcome to the Vibe with the Three on Five Awards Ceremony. I'm Cam, and I'm Emily. And you guys, we're just going to get right into it. We're wasting no time today. We're getting right into the awards ceremonies. All right, guys. So this is a really exciting episode. We're going to kind of review some of the stuff we've done this year. It should be good. So a year in review. There's been a lot of changes, like Jim Beheim stepping down from head coach position for the men's basketball team. I mean, that was a crazy change for the team. I would say it wasn't really that big of a shock, but huge adjustment. I mean, when somebody's been here for almost 50 years, it's always going to be different. Coach -hmm. uh, Coach Red Autry has taken over as the head coach. He's done an amazing job with this team. I mean, so well. We've been playing so well recently. Brought in a ton of guys through the portal. Brought back a bunch of guys. So Coach Mm -hmm. Redock is amazing so far this year with the team yeah we have some familiar faces such as chris bell judah mints still calling the dome home which is so exciting and there's some new faces such as jj starling that are key contributors on this use team so kept some great old players brought in some new talent it's really great yep so syracuse basketball has a current record of 10 and 3 they just played Pitt and beat them today, so that's a great win. Great Pitt win. will be a tournament yeah. team. Really, our only three losses are to good teams, Virginia, Gonzaga, Tennessee. I mean, those are really good teams, so mm-hmm. we've beaten who we should have beaten. Hopefully, we can make the tournament this year, but things are looking great for Syracuse men's basketball, which we love to see. That's right. So Syracuse football finished the season with a six and seven record and lost to USF in the roofclaim.com Boca Raton Bowl. So they had a little bit rougher of a season for sure. But again, a lot of new coaches, you know, coming in from last year, a lot of new coaches this year. But I'm hoping to see some improvements in the football season coming ahead. I agree, and Fran Brown has taken over the head coaching realm of the football team after the departure of Dino Babers. Uh, Fran Brown, longtime Georgia coach. Georgia has been very successful the past few years, so hopefully he can bring some of that success to Syracuse. I'm really excited for Fran Brown's tenure as a head coach for the Syracuse Orange. It's going to be very exciting. All right, you guys, moving on. So we have some Vibe with the 3-on-5 statistics for the 2023 year. So a year of a year in review, Vibe Blue Through and Five Edition. So we uploaded 28 regular podcast episodes this year, which is really good. And we have a lot of content that we've uploaded this year. Yeah. Including some vlogs, Emal. I mean, mm-hmm. we didn't even know we were gonna do the vlogs going into the year. We just kind of right. started them. So yep. we had 26 vlogs that we did this year. So A lot of regular episodes, a lot of vlogs. I mean, mainly the vlogs happened during the summer when, Mm -hmm. you know, we went to Syracuse Mets games and stuff like that. Personally, I mean, I always love the regular episodes, but the vlogs just, I love the vlogs. It's just something about them, definitely. And then do you want to get into our guests and our interviews from this year? Sure, for sure. So we did five interviews in person as shorts. So just like those player interviews, which I think are really interesting. They're also fun for us to do. And I feel like they're definitely a fan favorite. And this is really exciting. One of the main goals of starting our podcast, we've had five guests on our podcast, including Becca multiple times. So we appreciate Becca for, you know, always coming in to mix it up with us. And it's always great episodes when Becca's a guest. The Vibe of the Turn 5 has uploaded a total of 90 videos this year. Wow. So between vlogs, regular podcasts, shorts, everything, 90 videos have been uploaded. Wow. And I was making the slides and I literally went through and counted all of our <laughs> oh videos God. to get this. That's crazy. To get this stat. And then as of today, 12, 30, 23, we have 37 subscribers on YouTube. So hoping to grow that, obviously, but mm-hmm. 37 subscribers pretty good as of right now at least I think yeah you guys are dedicated subscribers I know some of you guys are definitely and 
In total, we've had 4,303 views in 2023, which honestly, looking at that is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, I feel like sometimes it's hard to get views on YouTube and like gain subscribers and stuff. But when you look at some of those numbers, it's really encouraging and really exciting. Definitely. And I forgot to put this on the slide, but I wanted to mention our most viewed video. And I'm pretty uh -huh. sure it was when when you vlogged at the Orange Madness. I'm pretty sure that's Yeah, that was a popular one. It's that one and the one I wanna say like when we graphed Mets post game and saw Zachary. I think those two are our most popular videos this year. Uh -huh. So really good views wise. Hopefully you can get the subscribers up because you guys, this has been in a lot, this has been a long time coming, but we still have the giveaway that we're yes. going to do for the 100 subscribers. It's in every description of this video. If you have not entered and you want to enter, it's in every description of every video. So check it out. If once we reach 100 subscribers, somebody will be picked for a giveaway. Mm -hmm. uh, please, like, get us to 100 subscribers. That's our yeah, main Yeah, share goal with right friends. Now. Just, yeah, share. Like, All that good stuff. If you guys didn't know also, I found this out the other day, but if you like the video, it goes into other people's recommended feeds. So if... You mm -hmm. follow Vibe of the Three One Five, and you like the video. And someone else that is into Syracuse basketball hasn't seen Vibe of the Three One Five. It will go into their recommended feed because somebody liked the video, and that's also what they're into. Like it mm, goes into their cool. recommended. So if you guys like the video, it really helps us out a ton. And I just found that out the other day, which is actually really cool. So moving on. Anyways, we're getting to, we're gonna get into some actual awards now. We had to review the year a little bit. We're getting into some awards now. Ema, the first award of the night is the Syracuse Most Improved Player. And this comes as a shock to at least me. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the beginning of the year, I would not have said this, but yeah, Syracuse Most Improved is Quadir Copeland. Congrats to Quadir. I mean, he's really stepped up a lot this year, for sure. Um, he's the reason we won today against Pitt. I mean, yeah. seriously, he was the player of the game. And Leading scorer yeah, without I mean, even being a starter is crazy. He's been so helpful off the bench. Like, I honestly did not expect Quadir to be that person. I was thinking maybe it'd be Kyle. You know, maybe JT would have improved a lot more. But Quadir kind of struck us by surprise, and he's been fantastic. I hope he can continue definitely. this because he's been a huge help to the team. Definitely. One thing I do want to mention before we continue, though, is a regular episode will be dropping next week. So that's when we recap the Syracuse versus Pitt game and all of our other usual shenanigans. So this mm -hmm. won't be in this episode. It'll be next week. We just wanted to do the award ceremony as its own episode because it's our end of year recap and our special episode to end off 2023. Yeah. Just wanted to get that out of the way. All right. Syracuse basketball most underrated. And I have my little cheat sheet right here so I can look at what's next without actually uh -huh. flipping yet the Syracuse <laughs> basketball most underrated is Malik Brown and I love Malik Brown I mean he's getting more recognition as of recently but I really still think Malik Brown is still underrated even though he's getting more recognition personally I think Malik Brown should be in the starting five but I, mm -hmm. I love Malik Brown yeah he's awesome you know we've always kind of thought he was as it says in the title, underrated, you know, always seeing him as a person who could be used more, used for different positions. So we love Malik and hopefully, you know, he keeps on getting more and more playing time and keeps it up. And getting better and better. I mean, the sky's mm -hmm. the limit for this guy. He's so good already. Who knows right. what could happen with him? All right, Emo. We have Syracuse basketball most disappointing. Yeah, he played good today. I'll give him that. He played good today, but the Syracuse basketball most disappointing. We have Benny Williams. Benny Williams. You know, as we've said, always say, we always say, you know, Benny's a good player. He has great potential. You know, it's just there's always seems to kind of be drama with him, missing yep. games, um, getting suspended. It's just stuff like that that is just so disappointing for us because we know how good of a player Benny can be. Exactly. He played amazing today against Pitt. He brought the energy. He mm -hmm. had so many athletic dunks today, but we haven't seen that a whole lot from Benny. I'm hoping we see it more, but 
for right now, Syracuse basketball most disappointing goes to Benny Williams. Not an award we want to give out, but award an award right. we kind of have to give out to say who's good and who's not doing the best. So right. Benny Williams, Syracuse basketball is most disappointing. A familiar face, Ema. We're going to see again. Mm -hmm. Syracuse basketball, we were right awards. So there's a little description on the awards that aren't self-explanatory. So I thought of the We Were Right Award. The We Were Right Award goes to a player that we knew would be good for their team. We predicted that they would be a key contributor before their success, and that's Malik Brown. We said this last year before he even started to play. We said Malik Brown will be a great player. I mean, we said it so early on, and he's yeah. been amazing. He was great last year. He's great this year. And another thing I was just thinking about is – we said at the end of last year, you know, Malik should play center. Malik should play center. And now yeah. he, Malik plays center. So we were right about that, too, which yeah. I find very funny. <laughs> Great so, sport takes. Literally. Malik Brown, thank you for coming to Syracuse University. That's all I can say mm -hmm. at this point. All right, Emo. Syracuse basketball MVP, most valuable player. No surprise, really. At least not in my eyes. I mean, yeah. is it a surprise to you? Not at all. I feel like it's a no-brainer. If you know Syracuse basketball, you know Judah Mintz is definitely. I mean, look at the look. Crazy. Look at the look on his face. He's not surprised either. Yeah, like he's all. He's generally one of the uh, highest leading scorers for the team. You know, he brings the energy to the team. He knows how to play. He's definitely one of the leaders for the team. And I'm so happy he returned. And he doesn't foul the team. Yeah, exactly. Like Coach Red said in this post-game press conference today, Judah is our leader, and mm -hmm. he is. That's all there is to it. All right, moving on from Syracuse basketball. We always have to cover Syracuse basketball first. You guys know it. <laughs> moving from Syracuse basketball to Syracuse football now, we're going to do some of the same awards for Syracuse football. So Syracuse football most improved is Emal. We got LaQuint Allen, so – it's crazy thinking about all he's gone through, yeah. especially at the beginning yeah. of the season. But he has helped so much with the plays we've seen this season. A lot of the touchdowns, you know, he's ran the ball super far. He's just really played his position well. Another person always bringing energy to the team. LeQuinn has done fantastic this year. He had over 1,000 rushing yards for Syracuse. It was just wow. really good. That's crazy. Um, I was thinking about who to put for most improvement. I'm like, you know what, LaQuint, because he barely even played last year. He played the bowl game against Minnesota, but that was really mm -hmm. it. I mean, Sean Tucker really had the helm last year. So LaQuint really saying. stepped up this year. LaQuint really played well yeah. for not really having much experience at all. So LaQuint Allen, most improved by far. Yeah, we're lucky to all have. Right. Definitely. And I'm glad he was actually able to play this year. So mm -hmm. thank God. All right, Emal, one of your favorite players. Syracuse football most underrated. We got Dan Valeri here, folks. So, you know, he's a player I've always thought has been good. You know, he came from Michigan. That's a very good, obviously, football school. No um, regular chump just goes to Michigan. Like, you have to be good at right. football to go to Michigan. So I was super excited when he came here and, you know, he started as quarterback, transitioned to tight end. I think they play him as both sometime, yep. sometimes. Um, he's just a really talented player, really nice guy. And I think in the most recent games, we've really seen him step up a lot and he's finally getting some of the recognition we've always thought he should get. Exactly. It's kind of funny because it's like the same thing with Malik. Like at the end mm -hmm. of the year, Dan started to get recognition. I'm like, but we like we've knew we've known this for so long that he's so good. Yeah. So he's still the most underrated in my opinion. So Dan Valeri, no spoilers, but we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm. righty Syracuse football most disappointing. Goes to Garrett Schrader. Now, with the injuries and everything, I'll give him a little bit of a break. But I'm sorry. When Oronde Gadsden is 15 yards down the field, wide open, with his arms in the air, you pass him <laughs> the ball, you don't run for two yards. I mean, some of the reads that Garrett Schrader was making just – I was not happy with some of the reads he was making. 
Mm -hmm. And with Kyle McCord coming in, he's going to pursue the NFL trader is. So goodbye, Garrett. Sorry, Mm -hmm. but I'm excited for McCord. You were very disappointing this year. And honestly, I'm not too surprised. Like I went into the year saying, I don't think Schrader's are our guy. Like I really didn't. And I was right. And I mean, I, I like, I want to give everyone a fair chance, but I just had a feeling in my iron box that he wasn't going to have a great year. And then he got injured and everything. So we have two players for the next award, two familiar faces. The Syracuse football, we were right award. Emal, we have our friends. Yeah, so there we got LaQuinn and Dan again. So as we stated before, I feel like these guys have done so much to help the team this year. They've made big impacts on some of the games we've won. They've both had really good plays. Um, And we've always thought about these guys. We always knew they were talented. We always knew they could help out the team more if given the opportunity. And when given the opportunity, they have stepped up. Exactly. I said in the bowl game last year, wow, like LaQuint's really going to be good. Like I'm really excited for him. And I was right. And we've always been saying, you know, put Dan and put Dan and come on, like put Dan Valerian, like, come on, like, Mm -hmm. why are we not playing him? And he's shown to us that he is a good player, and we were right about him this whole time. So here at Vibe with the 3 and 5 I don't want to toot my own horn, but, you know, here at Vibe with the 3 and 5 we, we 95% of the time make the right call. Like, we have pretty good takes here. So, Definitely. I mean, we were right awards. We had to throw them out there. All right. And then the MVP for Syracuse football is a defensive player. We got Marlo Wax Jr. Led the team in tackles. I wanted to put a defensive player on here somewhere, and I'm like, hmm. Who's uh, the MVP? I mean, we've used LaQuint twice. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know what? It's it's Marlowe because he is the captain in the defense. He's mm-hmm. led the team in tackles. I was going to put Justin Barron, but I'm like, no, LaQuint, um, not LaQuint, sorry. Marlowe deserves it. Marlowe led yes. the team in tackles. So Marlowe's the MVP of this year. And thank God Marlowe Axe is coming back. So you love to see I that. Know. So. I was just going to say I'm, that. I'm so excited for this upcoming SU team, the 2024 team. It's it's going to be exciting. Yeah, a lot of new changes, but we got guys like Marlo, as you just said, Justin staying. These guys can be huge leaders, you know. Justin's Keep coming that back. that mob mentality for Q's, all that. Yeah, stuff. literally. All right, you guys. Now we're getting we're gonna get into some more personalized awards. So we did Syracuse basketball, we did Syracuse football. Now we're gonna do awards that we came up with. So yes. starting with the best autograph, we have JJ Starling. And we were talking about this before we were recording, and I'm like, hmm, who do we put on here? I was saying either, you know, Matt Adams or Scott Kingery. I had to look at CNY and graphs and Becca graphs for yeah, some insight. Yep, but I'm like, you know, I just, I like JJ's autograph. I don't know, like, it's just so simple, and he repeats it so well. Like, it's so, I don't know what the word is. Like, it's so repeatable, I guess. Consistent, thank you. I just, I like his autograph. It's simple, it's clean. JJ Starling, best autograph. Ema, any thoughts on JJ? I was thinking when best autograph, I was thinking, you know, probably picking a baseball player but you mentioned mm-hmm. JJ I'm like you're so right I mean I remember I believe it was at the orange madness this year back had got we had gotten JJ and I'm like wow I really like his autograph like I remember saying that so perfect pick for this award yeah well, usually basketball players don't have really great autographs especially right. in college but JJ I mean yep. he's he's the best one I've seen in, especially in college basketball I mean mm-hmm. most guys just write their initials are like William Patterson's right what he writes 21 will or kyle cuff kc zero most of them just do initials but jj actually has an actual autograph so you like to see yes. that jj you win best autograph even though it's typically a baseball award at least in my opinion you won it so congratulations and now emo for worst autograph we have a player that we've talked about numerous times and made fun of numerous oh, yeah. times we got you the got- JD for not even JD, the scribble for yes. Jesus Downs. Um, I mean, this had to be the worst autograph. I'm sorry. It had to be. It's just such low effort. Like, I mean, I still appreciate him signing, you know, all that stuff, but 
it's that every time. It's yeah, just fun yeah, because it's always is. just a little scribble. It's just he so hits the whole line in like thirty seconds. Literally, he goes meh, meh, yeah. meh, and then hands you back the pen and then goes to the next person. Like it's so quick. I mean, like you said, I appreciate him signing, but mm-hmm. I mean, come on. It's not even want, your initials. Yeah, I would want my autograph to kind of like look like the letters in my name. It looks like he's testing a pen or something. Exactly. It looks like he's a little kid and he's drawing on a piece of paper with crayon yeah. or colored pencil or something. Like exactly. just random whatever he wants. Jeter Downs, I appreciate you signing, but your autograph is not good at all. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Nicest interaction of 2023. All right, so this person was a guest on our podcast, but he was a guest in 2022, so we couldn't mm. qualify as in the guest category when we reviewed that earlier. The best interaction of 2023 was with Caleb Okachukwu. I mean, he's just such a nice guy. Yeah, um, Caleb just is always really nice to the fans. He's definitely a fan favorite. He was so willing to come on our podcast, even when we had about... 10 followers on YouTube so he was just always honestly supportive of us and he's just a great guy I remember when we were looking for him to get a picture at the spring game and looking for him to get an interview after one of the home games he came right over he was like hey guys like he remembered us and he was just Mm -hmm. just such a genuine guy he was one of the best players on the team and he was the nicest like You know, somebody like that could be rude because they're actually good, but he was just so nice. Like, when we interviewed him for TikTok, he put his arms around both of us. He always reposts whenever we tag him in Mm -hmm. something. Like, just always so nice to interact with Caleb. And one thing I want to mention is, unfortunately, Caleb has run out of college eligibility, so he will be pursuing the NFL. So, best of luck to Caleb. We wish nothing but the best for him. He's been amazing always here so much well yeah definitely but Caleb Okuchuku nicest interaction of 2023 and funny enough this picture is from when he got the pick six at Purdue if you know you know we Mm -hmm. talked about that with him on the episode that we filmed with him so had to throw this picture in here all right Emo rudest interaction of 2023 (laughs) this somebody I cannot stand Comes to no surprise, we've definitely touched on this before, but it's Ellie De La Cruz. You Hold know, up fours if you're dating Ronnie Mauricio. <laughs> oh my goodness! But you know, promised us to sign. He promised to sign Never outside did. for us. Didn't sign for like some kids. With Sharpie. Looked us right ball. in the eye and told us no. Got on the bus. Just such a negative. Rude. Experience. You're so rude. Lying to fans is not cool, you know. If you want to, if you don't want to sign, just literally tell me no, and I'll be or just fine. Like, walk straight to the bus. Literally, it's, pretend to be on your phone. <laughs> like exactly, do what you got to do. But it's just upsetting when you're going out of your way to lie to somebody. Yeah, you're wasting our time. You know, we could have just went home, gotten home an hour earlier, but, you know, we waited for you. We bought cards of you. It's just that type of thing that gets frustrating. Sorry, Ellie, I sold your cards on eBay right after you pulled that crap. So <laughs> I made money off you. So moon yeah. to you. So Ellie De La Cruz, rudest interaction of 2023. I'll never support him. Like, literally. Even if he's on the Yankees, I won't support him. Like, moon to you, Ellie. Yeah. All right. Best games. And there's two that we attended in 2023. We have the Syracuse Mets at Rochester Red Wings and San Diego Padres at New York Yankees. Ima, let's talk about Mets at Red Wings first. Yeah, I've noticed how neither of these are Syracuse games. I thought that was (laughs) funny. But the Mets at Rochester, yeah, we went to a game there. I think it was in like May or June, early on Mm -hmm. in the season. Yeah, and it was just such a nice experience. It was our first time at Rochester. All of the staff was really nice, which is huge. Um, the players were nice. We had a lot of autographs that day. Overall, just a really positive experience. You know, we went to a baseball game. We had fun. We had a good time. We didn't get yelled at and harassed, which is just the usual at Syracuse. So it was honestly a very peaceful experience. 
Yeah, I really like Rochester. The stadium's beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. I can't say enough good things about it. And it's honestly my favorite stadium that I've been to. I haven't been to a, a hundred, a million, you know, but Rochester is my favorite stadium that I've been to. I really mm-hmm. like it. It's accessible. The yeah. like the, the staff is all nice. Both teams come out the same way when they're leaving. So it's nice. It's awesome. I mean, just you can't say enough nice things about Rochester. I love it there. I yeah. wish it was our home stadium. We'll have to go back to see your guys. Definitely. And we'll Definitely. be vlogging it. <laughs> yeah, don't you guys worry. Every every little trip, you know, Cooperstown, Rochester, whatever, we always it's always a vlog now. Like we oh, have yeah. to. And then the Yankees game. I had to put this in because it was my first MLB game, my first time going to the Yankee Stadium. Um mm-hmm. just a really good game. It was really action packed because it was actually a walk off. I don't know if you guys remember that vlog, but it was a really long vlog. It was like an hour long vlog, which was just crazy. Um, it was really fun. And we ended up doing the bus trip down there. I mean, unfortunately, the bus people lied to me and ended up flaring up my UC. And I haven't been the same since, but oh, well, I guess the Yankees actual game was still fun. That's mm-hmm. what we're focusing on is the actual game, not the experiences before or after. Room. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Yankees game, fun. Glad I went. First MLB game. Emo, any comments about Padres at Yankees? Yeah, just a really good game. Tons of good players. You know, we saw Soto play there and now he'll be there permanently, yep. which is really cool. <laughs> and like the game went into extra innings, which was cool. Like Cam said, it was just a really good game, good gameplay. IKF walked us off that game. It was his first yeah. walk off as a Yankee. Just love to see it. It was an awesome vlog, awesome experience. You know, got to walk around the whole stadium, tour the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You guys got to see it all. So, I mean, I keep saying this, but if you haven't seen these videos, go back and watch them because they're good videos. That, I mean, that vlog is an hour vlog. really funny. It's a, it's a really good vlog. Like, like we were so obnoxious, especially we on the bus, because the people <laughs> behind us were so annoying. So we were just saying and doing whatever we wanted. Like, Yeah, like and it, we were vlogging from like five in the morning to like 10 at night. So yeah, there's so much happened. <laughs> It was just crazy. That's why that vlog's an hour, and it was literally one day. So you guys right. got to see an, a, an hour out of our 24 hours that day. Like, it was crazy, but we covered the whole day, basically. Like, I love that vlog. That vlog is awesome. Yeah. All right, moving on. The worst game we attended in 2023 is St. Rose at Syracuse <laughs> Exhibition. And mind you, Exhibition. <laughs> exhibition. Like that, we went to this game in hopes of, as we always have before, get some autographs for, before from the players, interact with them, give them a high five, whatever. Um, the ushers and event staff were being very rude, wouldn't let us go down and get autographs. We're checking our like tickets multiple times. It's like I know how to read. Make like, sure we were in the row. exact section. Like geez. yeah, and then just would it be an exhibition game? the gameplay wasn't too great. Like it wasn't a super competitive game, like the first game of the season. So it wasn't that great gameplay. Like I said, just very disappointing. We ended up leaving like basically after the first half. Yeah, literally like this event staff was so rude. I was hoping to get autographs. I mean, thankfully there was an event at the mall like a few weeks ago that I was able to get some autographs, but still like Mm -hmm. event staff, being so rude at an exhibition game, like really, like get it away. really ruined the experience. Definitely. So if you're thinking about going to the JMA Wireless Dome to see Syracuse basketball, just watch it on TV. Just yeah. save your money and watch it on TV because it's horrible there. Like the security is so so rude. All righty, Emma, we got some Syracuse Mets awards next, and oh yes, some familiar a familiar face for the next one. I mean, we talk about them pretty much every week. We have. <laughs> The Syracuse Mets Most Valued Player and the Most Valued Player Award goes to a player that we always that was always a pleasure to see and that was always so nice to the fans. This may not be the best player on the team, but definitely one of the best to interact with. And mm-hmm. Emal, who do we have? It's Ricky Tyler Thomas. You guys, um, are you surprised? The answer should be no because it's Ricky Tyler Thomas, but I mean, come on. I was thinking of some Syracuse Mets awards to do, and I'm like, 
I'm not doing MVP because Moon to that. So we're doing most valued player because I value Ricky Tyler Thomas. He was awesome mm. when he was here. Sadly, yeah. he's not going to be here this upcoming year. But Ricky Tyler Thomas was valued when he was in Syracuse. Shout out, Ricky. All right. Syracuse Mets most improved personality is Abraham Almonte. Emil, do you want to uh, explain what this award is? Yes. So this is the most most improved personality award goes to a player that was once rude but has since changed his ways. So honestly, this really surprised me when we had multiple very positive, awesome interactions with Abraham Almonte. You know, he was rude previously on, I think it was the Paw Sox or Woo yeah. Sox, Bef- whatever you want to call it. Vlogging. Before the yeah. times were vlogging, we went to Scranton and we saw Woo Sox at Rail Riders and we graphed Woo Sox inside and Abraham Almonte was just so rude. And then <laughs> he had his pants, you know, high watered as he did. And then he hit Real a home tight. run and I was just like, oh my gosh, like, come on. Like, being rude and then hitting a home run, I was just like, come on. But this past year he was in Syracuse and he was actually really nice this year. So mm-hmm. love to see it. Like I love when people change their ways for the better. It was actually pleasant to interact with him. Ran out of yeah. stuff for him to sign because he was actually nice. So mm-hmm. shout out to El Monte. I was gonna put Jose Peraza as the most improved personality, but Peraza would sign from time to time last year. Like True. he would sign more often this past year, but like, he would still sign, you know, here and there when he was on Scranton in the Woo Sox. So, he For would sign sure. time to time. But Almonte was just horrible the past year. So, glad he's changed his ways for sure. Definitely. All right, Emo. We have the Dream Award. And the Dream Award goes to a pedophile. And you guys, that pedophile is Josh Giddy. Emo? Yeah. What are we the thinking? Next couple awards, including this, are kind of more of a meme award, but mm-hmm. that's five of the three and five. You know, we're goofy. If you guys watch our vlogs, you should know. But you know, Dream wears a mask. That's what the mask is. You can see the mask there. Obviously, <laughs> you know, look at Josh Giddy allegations. He fit perfectly for this award. And some people, such as Joe Spo, think that. <laughs> Josh Giddy's an innocent man. And yes, Joe, I'm going to name drop you because I didn't in the last episode because I was being nice, but I'm name dropping you now. Joe Spo, you think that Josh Giddy's an innocent man, and I'm sorry, but you're wrong. I'm just, (sighs) Josh Giddy, congratulations. You won the Dream Award. That's all I have to say. This is a obnoxious award because I don't know if you guys could tell, but I've been watching iCarly recently and I've inserted some clips. But this is the Gibby Award. The Gibby Award goes to a player that always makes his presence known, as Gibby would do on iCarly when saying, <coughs> Gibby, when entering a room. And email, surprise, surprise, Judah Mintz is a repeat offender on the Vibe of the Throne 5 Awards. Yeah. You know, if he's on the floor, on the court, he's always making a lot of action, making some really cool shots, making it the Showing game the energy interesting. Always. He's always yeah. showing energy. So, like like this award, you know, he always makes his presence known when on the floor. So, Judah Mintz with another this, award. I was thinking of this. I'm like, we're, we're using the Gibby Award. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. I mean, who Two doesn't legends, like Gibby? I mean, Literally. Awesome. All right. Imal, you have the pleasure of introing this award. <laughs> All right, so this is the Be Yourself Dylan Award. So Be Yourself Dylan Award goes to a player that is a huge villain to his peers. So as the sign Dylan's holding up, I am not your villain, he may not be your villain. But if you're in the NBA and you're playing against Dylan Brooks, he probably is going to be your villain. I think he's literally said something about him being the villain or something. His Instagram bio was literally Dylan the villain. So I'm yeah. Like- this and it's is funny. Their names are both Dylan. I know so, they're spelled different, but still. Uh, um, <laughs> very funny picture to you, Pitch Cam. I was thinking I that. Had but... to, I had to get the I am not your villain and the yeah. I'm not just picture of Dylan Brooks. I wanted to get the picture of him like staring down, uh-huh. but there wasn't a picture of Dylan Brooks doing that, so I resorted to this picture. I tried to pick goofy pictures for the slideshow, so I hope you guys enjoyed my picture yeah. choice. But yeah, be yourself, Dylan. Hi guys, I'm not your villain, but Dylan Brooks is. 
Dylan Brooks is the BSF Dylan Award winner. So, <laughs> I mean, like Emo said, these last few words are really obnoxious, but had to do them. I mean, we had to have some originality here at Vibe of the Throne 5. I mean, we're not just going to do, you know, the basic MVP, most improved player, mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. Yeah, we do that. We, yeah, we did that. But, you know, Vibe of the Throne 5, you got to do something obnoxious. You got to make it personalized. So, the Be Yourself Dylan Award goes to Dylan Brooks. Congratulations. Yeah, and that, if you've watched this far in the video, you're a real one, so I, I hope Literally. you actually enjoy the uh, humor in these slides. Exactly. All right, the chump of the year, <laughs> Benny Williams. He was the ch- Emo, how many times was he the chump this year? I mean, honestly. Probably like five, honestly. Like five At times least. out of like 20 episodes. Yeah, so Benny Williams, chump of the year. We've already recapped this numerous times. I don't really think I need to go into any more detail. I mean, we re- recapped it when it was most disappointing player. So mm-hmm. I'm not really going going to go into much detail. But Benny Williams, Trump of the Year, he got that so many times throughout the week. So he it earned Trump of the Year. Yeah, exactly. And then, Ima, I'll give you the honor of... This? <laughs> honestly... Can- yeah, this is the best award. Yeah. I'm sorry, you guys. This is honestly like the award I'm most excited for because it's one of you guys. It's one of our fans. You might tell Without me when you're guys, ready for me to flip. I will. Without like your guys' support, your guys watching our videos, liking, subscribing, all that stuff, your comments, there'd be no sense of having this channel. And there's exactly. a fan that always goes above and beyond and is always liking, always commenting. Always watching, like always interacting definitely so cam let me flip the slide <laughs> fan of the year let me pop this thing come on come on work the fan of the year <laughs> it's not working oh my gosh there we go yeah the fan of the it's year everywhere. like a fan of the year is back on everybody it's back on. You guys, I just got confetti all over the place. It's so back. funny because it took so long for it to work. Oh but my gosh. I could think of no no one else that is so highly deserving of this award. As we've said before, Beck is always interacting. She actually helps us out a lot, even though she's not directly a part with Vibe. She always records stuff for us. She always takes pictures for us. She honestly does so much, and we appreciate Becca Definitely. so much. She's been on the podcast so many times. Like like Emo mm-hmm. said, just has done so much for us. So, Becca, we Love appreciate you, you here at Vibe of the Throne 5. And actually, you guys, Becca is going to make a speech for her Fan of the Year uh, nomination, I guess we'll call yes. it. Yes. So, I'll insert that right now. Hello, everyone. This is Becca. And I was just told by my peers that I won the Vibe with the 3 and 5 Fan of the Year Award. And they wanted me to give a speech. So um, I'm really glad with the progress that the channel has made over the past year or so. Um, I feel like the videos have gotten a lot better. Um, and I really enjoy the content that my sister and my cousin produce. And I want to be a part of that and support it as much as I can. Um, and I'm really looking forward to what they do in the future with, uh, other interviews and new content that they release. And hopefully we, we can continue to grow this community so we get more fans. Um, and hopefully I'm not the fan of the year every year. Um, so, but thank you guys for supporting the channel and thank you Cam and Emmy for the award as it will be going on display in my room. So thanks again and salute to your peers. You guys, all right, so we're currently recording still. There, look at this huge mess. I mean, Becca, you deserve the confetti, but there's confetti. I mean, there's it's all over the floor and everything. I mean, you get, Becca, you deserve this mess, but I made a huge mess, so moon to me. Let me get this piece of confetti off my laptop <laughs> all right you guys well we're gonna do a little bit of a speech not anything fancy but just want to mm-hmm. thank you guys for like email said previously you know commenting liking subscribing all that jazz you guys know 
we want to thank you guys for that. I mean, when we started Vibe of the Turn Five, I didn't think it would like I didn't really think we'd get any viewers, honestly. Like we'd get Becca as a viewer, and I th honestly thought that would be it. But I'm yeah. really happy that it's turned into what it has, even though we're not, you know, a huge YouTube channel with millions of subscribers. I'm still really happy with what we have and it really it's exciting to do these videos you know the podcasts the, re the regular vlogs and everything it's really exciting to do these videos and to put them up for you guys so we appreciate your guys support email anything you want to add to my little speech here yeah i mean this was honestly a really big year for the podcast we started in like november of 2022 so this was our first full year and we've honestly just learned so much we've gotten more comfortable and like we started doing the vlogs which we never even thought of doing until <laughs> baseball <laughs> season came along but you know we have so much more content now and can't wait to keep continuing growing you know making more videos for you guys hopefully improving them making them better and better it's just been a very exciting year and I hope that 2024 be even better. Definitely. So like we said, thank you guys again, because without you, it would not be possible. That is going to close it up for this video. We hope you guys enjoyed the award ceremony for Vibe of the 305 2023. And you guys don't tell anybody, but I think this might be our yearly end of year, you know, little award ceremony, you know, little episode at the end of the year to recap the year. Mm -hmm. Tradition. Tradition, yeah. So it's the first annual award ceremony mm -hmm. for Vibe of the Throne 5. We hope you guys enjoyed. As always, leave a like, comment, subscribe. All that usual nonsense. I mean, you guys know it by now. Email anything to add to this outro. Just the normal. Salute to your peers. Salute to your peers. And see you in 2024.